Hello, and welcome to Eastern Roman History. To appreciate the events of the siege and fall of Constantinople in 1453, it requires exploring the number and type of troops involved in it. This video shall examine these facets of the Ottoman and Eastern Roman forces during the siege. There are a multitude of sources for the numbers of soldiers fielded by both defenders and attackers. However, all of these sources give different totals, which makes it impossible to say with utter certainty the number of people participating on both sides. Using the eyewitness sources, they give us a relatively precise breakdown of the forces involved. Our most precise source for the Ottomans, Giacomo Totaldi, a Florentine merchant present at the siege, says the Turks had 200,000 men, a figure confirmed by George Sfrancis. Totaldi breaks down the army further. Of these 200,000, 60,000 were actually soldiers, of which 30 to 40,000 were cavalry. A quarter of these soldiers were equipped with male coats or leather jackets. Some were equipped with much heavier armour, as he says. After the fashion of France, some after the fashion of Hungary. Totaldi also mentions that some Turks were equipped with iron helmets and had bows and crossbows. The rest of the army were only equipped with scimitars and shields. These were the Bashi Bazooks. Leonard of Chios gives an additional detail that the number of Janissaries in the Ottoman army numbered 15,000 men. Although this is likely an exaggeration, as Mehmed II had only just increased the number of Janissaries from 3,000 to 5,000. It is possible that what Leonard considered Janissaries included far more men than they actually were. Totaldi describes the remaining 140,000 as thieves and plunderers, hawkers, workmen, and others who followed the army. Among other army estimates by eyewitnesses, there is Niccolo Barbaro, who says the Turks had 150 to 160,000 men. Agostino Patusi says 200,000, and Leonardo of Chaos says that they had 300,000. Of the near contemporaries, Montaldo gives 240,000, Critibulus gives 300,000, and Ducas and Calcocondyles give an enormous 400,000. Pseudo Francis, the 16th century historian, states there were 258,000 Turks. 200,000 seems to be the correct total number of personnel employed on land by Mehmet against the walls of Constantinople. He also tells us that the Turks had 10,000 culverins, which were light cannons, in addition to their larger cannon and the Super Bombard. The Great Bombard was a single cast bronze gun. It fired, according to Totaldi, a shot 11 spans and 3 fingers, roughly 101.6 inches in circumference, weighing 1,900 pounds. The other cannon fired shot weighing a mixture of 800, 1,000, and 1,200 pounds, and on average, these cannon fired between 100 and 120 times per day. Totaldi estimated that to maintain this fire, the Turks used 1,000 pounds of gunpowder per day. At sea, Niccolo Barbaro tells us that the Turks had 140 ships. Sfrancis says the Turks had 400 ships and boats in total. Totaldi says that there were 16 to 18 galleys, 60 to 80 galliots, 16 to 20 palandins, or ships large enough to transport horses, and various other smaller vessels. In total, 92 to 118 ships. This navy was relatively small compared to the Ottoman army because the Turks had only recently built a proper navy. Just as the figures for the Ottoman forces have several totals that roughly group around a single figure, so too do the sources for the defenders. George Francis gives the most precise figure for the number of Roman soldiers at 4,773 in the defence. Francis explains how he knew this. George Francis Chronicle 35.7 I was in a position to know this exact figure of our strength for the following reason. The Emperor ordered the Demarchs to take a census of their Demarchies. These are districts of the city of Constantinople. 
and to record the exact number of men, laity and clergy, able to defend the walls, and what weapons each man had for defence. Then he commanded me, This task is for you, and no one else, as you are skilled in arithmetic. Take these lists and compute them in the privacy of your home, the exact figure of the available defenders, weapons, shields, spears, and arrows. I completed my task and presented the master list to my lord and emperor in the greatest possible sadness and depression. The true figure remained a secret, known only to him and to myself. This state secret may be why the exact figure for the defenders varies among the eyewitness sources. In addition to the 4,773 Romans, Srencis also mentions there were just about 200 foreigners participating in the defence, bringing the figure up to 4,973. This latter figure has inspired a wide array of discussion. It is possible Sfrancis simply made an error and meant 2,000. He may have purposely left off a zero to understate the aid sent to Constantinople, which he then laments in the following paragraph that no one sent help. Mark Bartusis makes a very interesting hypothesis that the 200 were foreigners in imperial service, which makes sense as these were lists based on the city's inhabitants. This number would therefore completely exclude the foreign allies present at the siege, which fits Francis's purpose and is also still consistent with the many other eyewitness estimates for the number of defenders, usually placing the total number of Romans at 5 to 6,000. Since the late Byzantine army utilised foreign soldiers in their armed forces for centuries, this figure might well have included the remnants of the imperial bodyguard. Sarancis' total is confirmed and expanded upon by other contemporaries. Leonard of Chios reports that there were at most 6,000 Greeks, and from the Genoese, Galatans, and Venetians, hardly as many as 3,000. Tertaldi reported the total defending army had 6 to 7,000 soldiers. Curiously, Tertaldi mentions that there were 25 to 30,000, or in a different version of his account, 30 to 35,000 men under arms. Since this number clearly is not an estimate of the number of soldiers in the defence, with Leonard of Chios writing that our numbers were small indeed, and Sfrancis' official count of Roman soldiers, the evidence makes it amply clear that the defenders did not have enough arms and armour to equip anything larger than the roughly seven to 8,000 men they had, and Tertaldi himself makes a distinction between men under arms and fighting men. Thus it seems likely that this figure is simply an estimate of the number of men able to bear arms in the city at the time. Leonard sums up the desperate situation the defenders were in, as well as their equipment. Our numbers were small indeed, and the greater part of the Greeks were men of peace, using their shields and spears, their bows and swords, according to the light of nature, rather than with any skill. The majority had helmets and body armour of metal or leather, and fought with swords and spears. Those who were skilled in the use of bow or crossbow were not enough to man all the ramparts. The defender's navy at the start of the siege, deployed to protect the Golden Horn, was equally small. Leonard reports that they had seven Genoese vessels, three Cretan ones, twenty smaller ships, and a number of boats. Barbaro reported 37 armed ships and five imperial galleys that were unarmed. Tertaldi mentions 30 nefs, 9 galleys, which included 2 light galleys, 3 Venetian galleys, 3 Byzantine galleys, and 1 Genoese galley, although only 9 ships were equipped to stand guard over the great chain across the Golden Horn. The Ottoman army in 1453 was, despite its fairly recent origin, one of the most formidable and especially its core units, the most professional in either Europe or Asia. Most of the professional Ottoman army were Turkish Sipahi cavalry and Kapikulu soldiers, who were slaves or prisoners in origin. These were not a homogenous band of Muslim Turks, but a diaspora of Christians, Muslims, Turks, Slavs, Greeks and others. 
This assortment of peoples and creeds in the Ottoman army is reflected in figures such as Zaganos Pasha, an Albanian in Mehmed's service, and his closest advisor. The Janissaries were the elite arm of the Kapikulu. The Sipahis and the Kapikulu were standing troops that were properly equipped, trained, and paid. Aside from the standing professional corps, the meat of the Ottoman army were the Azaps. These irregulars had very little training and were levied from the Muslim peasantry generally to serve as archers for a single campaign before being dismissed. The Akinsi were the cavalry counterparts of the Azaps, levied provincial horsemen. Another part of the Ottoman army of Mehmet II were the Voynuk. These were Christian auxiliaries from the Balkans. The Turks also employed Christian heavy cavalry, called a legator, with a squire called a gebelu. Many of these soldiers were recruited using the Devsemi system. The defender's army can be split into two groups, the Roman forces and the foreign allies. The Roman forces consisted of prunoia, which were professional soldiers that rendered military or civil service in exchange for privileges, volunteer militia, and members of the aristocracy, such as Theophilus Paleologus. A hundred cavalry, which we are told Lucas Notaris commanded as a reserve force, consisted of Stradioti, which are armoured medium cavalry, and Gianizaroi, which are light cavalry. The Roman militiamen were drawn from the city's inhabitants and refugees. Indeed, both the Venetian colony in Constantinople and secret volunteers from Galata joined the defenders, offering as much aid as possible. Volunteers from elsewhere also joined, such as professional Cretan sailors. Both the Romans and their allies had professional sailors, which, aside from the nine ships in the Golden Horn, largely joined the defenders on the walls. The Romans and their allies had archers and crossbowmen, and the Italians had hand gunners. The defenders also had cannon of their own, but could not deploy them on the Theodosian walls as the recoil damaged them. The Italian allies were made up mostly of professional condottieri, such as those that accompanied Giovanni Justiniani and Cardinal Isidore. Professional sailors and merchants, such as Gaia Como Tataldi, though not soldiers, were all handy with their weapons as they all had to be able to defend themselves while making potentially dangerous voyages across the Mediterranean Sea. There was also the contingent of Turks led by Prince Orhan. This has been an overview of the figures and type of soldiers involved in the siege. Please do remember to like and subscribe, and this has been Eastern Roman History. Thank you.